Hey guys, what's up? It's Tremaine. Welcome back to the channel. Super awesome to have you guys back again with us for another week of preparation. Guys, it's our weekly market forecast. And in today's one, we're going to have a look at these five pairs. So we're going to have a look at AUDJPY, CHFJPY, NZDJPY, Aussie CAD, and New Zealand Dollar CAD. So there's a reason why today I've decided to group my pairs as such, because I really wanted to show you guys um, how thinking about the market and thinking about the pairs that you're trading as a portfolio and having these pairs within your portfolio, thinking about correlation between these pairs can really help you build consistency because consistency is just about us being profitable at the end of that cycle where we measure ourselves or where we do that review. Now, we don't have to be profitable on a specific pair or rather on a specific asset. But if we have a portfolio, it kind of eases a lot of the emotional pressure. And we think about this like we just need to end the month or the week profitable with the portfolio of pairs that we are trading. And so because we are thinking about it like a portfolio, we manage our risk within our portfolio. And that's the power of thinking about the pairs that you are trading like a, a, like a portfolio and as well as in terms of currency strengths and correlation now let's get into things guys we'll start off with aud jpy now we're going to notice how on a lot of these jpy code pairs that we've grouped together the structure pretty much all looks almost the same so what we can see from a daily perspective guys is this market that is in some sort of a consolidation some sort of a sideways moving structure and what we'll notice about structure within this sideways moving structure is that price has created lower structures on the way to the upside. So we've been creating these lower structures and all of those higher lows that were formed in this small uptrend were all violated nice and impulsively to the downside. So all of these lower structures being violated and price really just creating a new lower low at this point. So we clearly see some sell side momentum on AUD JPY. So how we're going to approach a lot of these JPY code pairs is we're high, longer, higher time frame. We're going to be looking to jump into this higher time frame sell side momentum that we see coming in. So just as a reference, when we go through all of the other pairs, the other JPY code pairs, we're going to be kind of positioning ourselves in the same direction, but the way that we are going to approach each of these pairs is still going to be different. So still watch the other pairs analysis. So let's get into AUD JPY on the H4 guys. So on the H4, what we did actually point out in the live session this morning was price creating these two lower structures there. So what we did was we put on a support trend line just to identify the nature of this trend because we currently are seeing high lows, highs, and then I guess higher lows. We can confirm this as a swing at this point. So what we're going to be waiting for on AUD JPY is really for prices to come into our key resistance areas. So what we can see here is some resistance on the H4 over there. Market almost tapped into that zone, but just turned right before that zone. We had a push to the downside. And so now we're expecting that if price does make its ascent, price is probably going to want to be attracted to this area of resistance. Why? Because there are stops above that area of resistance and as well as because price has not tapped into this previous um, resistance area that was left behind. So with that bias, we understand that long term our selling probabilities are going to come from this structural area here. So we have our bias, our directional bias, we are sell bias, we are looking to trade in the direction of the momentum and we've identified our point of interest. Where are the probabilities going to be on our side to trade the sell side momentum? Now going forward on AUD JPY, what we can expect is for AUD JPY to want to make a move to the upside to clear this high and then we start any long-term descents. So that's exactly what we are going to look for on AUD JPY. We are going to look to see if this market does rally to the upside and give us some structure that supports this sell bias that we have on AUD JPY long term for either a potential risk entry or a potential reduced risk entry. Regardless of what setup the market gives us, 
we have our directional bias and we know what kind of structure we need the market to give us in our point of interest or at a zone where we anticipate some sell sensitivity. We know exactly what we expect from the market and we know exactly which directional bias to trade. All we need to do in this at this point in time is wait for prices to come into our area of sell sensitivity and then we wait for our probabilities to be increased by the setup that presents itself in our area. So that's what we're going to be doing on AUDJPY guys. We're going to be exercising some patience, waiting on a nice sell setup to form at resistance areas in the direction of our higher time frame sell side momentum. Now let's go into CHFJPY guys. Now on Swiss Yen, what we're going to notice is that structure is similar on most of our time frames. So on the daily, what we see is a market that has been creating lower structures as we move to the upside. So creating these lows and then violating a lot of these lows with some, I guess, a lot of selling pressure and a lot of momentum, even creating a new lower low. So we've seen the direction of the momentum. We've seen the direction that the market wants to be trading in at this point in time. There's a lot of sellers interested in selling Swiss Yen. They cannot hide it. We can see the imbalance caused by all of the selling pressure. And that in turn gives us some directional uh, or rather a directional bias that we can follow in terms of the momentum. Now, before we drop down onto that H4, higher time frame structure on Swiss Yen, I guess there's a lot more higher time frame sell bias structure than um, we'd say AJ or even New Zealand dollar yen. Um, and that's because of this higher time frame ascending structure. So at this higher time frame, or rather let's isolate this higher time frame structure. We'll say we have one touch. We'll say we have two touches over there. And if we can see what happened at our potential third touch of this um, ascending structure, what we will see is prices decelerating towards our important resistance area and then obviously we are seeing those sellers coming in more aggressively than they've been in the market for a very long time if we go back we'll see the last time we ever saw aggressive candlesticks aggressive selling candlesticks was probably in this cell over here and even in that cell the size of the candlesticks were not even half as aggressive as these so we're seeing clear selling momentum on swiss yen now, how we're going to be approaching this on those smaller time frames is that we know that on AUDJPY, we're going to be exercising the most amount of patience to wait for price to pull up into our zone of um, importance. Now, on Swiss Yen, if we look at the four hour, we can see that price is a lot closer to this resistance area here. We could still be expecting price to violate this resistance, obviously break back with into structure and then respect the structure it previously broke out of and then continue with the sell side momentum. Or guys, we could see, or let's just jump back onto the daily quickly just to look at the structure. We could see prices pulling into the neckline that was violated to the downside. So we do see a nice double top structure here at our third touch and then giving us that nice violation of the neckline and price has not retested that neckline as yet. So what we could expect maybe long term is for price to want to make its way up to this neckline to test our neckline before we see that sell side momentum. Now on the four hour what we're going to do is we're going to prepare for any premature sell setups. So what I mean by that is we're going down as low as the H1 for CHFJPY and we have isolated a nice ascending structure. So within this ascending structure guys, we do have extreme highs and extreme lows and we then see price creating structural, structural levels within these extreme highs and these extreme lows. So us just being traders that look at nature's theory, that look at the nature of the market, we're just going to assume that this is our impulsive move that has violated some nice structural levels to the downside and this is our corrective structure. So now that we've isolated our corrective structure, we do see a nice multi-touch structure. So price has the potential to come up and give us that third touch or terminate somewhere in and around these areas here before we see any early JPY strength coming in. So what we're doing here is we're still exercising patience, waiting for the setup to form the optimal cell setup that will give us the highest probabilities in the directional 
bias that we've established from our higher time frames and that we're expecting higher time frame momentum we're waiting for all of that to align so we're going to exercise just a little bit of patience what i would also do is maybe even take into account these previous resistance structures here and see how the market treats these resistance structures here do we come down from these resistance structures and violate our support trend line if we do so and we see prices moving back to the upside then i evolve my structure and change my trend line if i need to accommodating for the most recent price action so i still will be paying attention to what price is going to do at these highs still expecting price to violate to the upside clear this previous resistance and then we start looking for our sell bias setups so that's the directional bias and the setup that we're looking for for the for next week on swiss yen let's go on to new zealand dollar jpy so guys on new zealand dollar jpy let's go up to the daily we'll discuss very similar structure only thing that that differs about this structure is that we have not created new lower structures from where the corrective structure began so we have violated all of these intermediary swing lows um, during the small trend to the upside nice and impulsively so we still do have that momentum on the daily here on new zealand dollar yen though what we can see if we drop down onto an h4 and we begin to isolate some structure we'll begin to see something very similar as aud jpy and chf jpy now we have our important resistance areas up there which we are obviously going to look for a reaction from we're going to be looking at how the market gets to these resistance areas over here and obviously what the market does at those resistance areas now very similar bias we want to be in on that sell side momentum but what i'm going to be doing with nzd jpy is that if the jpy code pairs do not buy over the course of next week and we do end up seeing some selling pressure coming in from all three of these JPY code pairs in Monday, New Zealand dollar JPY is the first pair that I will be looking at. Why is that? Let's drop down to our H1 structure and begin to isolate. So what we'll begin to see is this market that obviously has come from these structural highs over there, came down, created lows, created highs, created new lows, created highs, created lower lows. And then obviously the only highs to have been violated are these highs here and these extreme highs up there so where's the next highest structures to have been created after these lows here it's these highs there and then obviously next lows and then bob's your uncle so now that we have two highs and two lows we begin to isolate our structure so we have our support trend line over there we begin to draw that structure in we have our resistance trend line only taking into account our extreme swings there we go what we will notice about this structure is that this structure is a potential multi-touch structure and we are currently at and close to the third touch of this structure now one thing to mention about the nature of this corrective structure is that prices have impulsed to our area of resistance where we're looking to sell so even if we were looking to sell immediately on monday we should be waiting for that reversal structure to confirm our directional bias because prices have been impulsive to our area of resistance so looking at things just recapping we're looking to sell AUD JPY we're looking to sell Swiss yen and we're looking to sell um, New Zealand dollar yen we're looking to exercise patience a lot of patience if AUD JPY buys it will put us nicely into our important resistance area where we'll be able to sell on Swiss yen guys we're looking for a very similar outlook but what we have is some smaller structure inside that can still give us an early sell setup that if we do see that sell coming in on these JPY code pairs, we'll still be able to exercise a little bit of patience just waiting for the small setup to form. And then obviously we sell. New Zealand dollar JPY guys, this setup is sort of almost ready, but we are waiting for our added confirmation of our structure to be able to sell this pair. So what we're doing is we're gonna be a bit more attentive to this one we're going to exercise a little bit more patience on there and we're going to exercise the most patience on there and that's if these jpy pairs decide to buy over the course of next week which setups are we going to be looking at chf jpy and aud jpy because the higher they go the more they set up these nice sell buyer structures that we're looking to trade 
And if we don't see that buy and we see JPY pairs going down over the course of next week, we know that New Zealand dollar JPY is the most mature or the easiest for us to isolate that structure to be able to jump into that sell side momentum. Now that is the reason why we actually group these pairs to show how just because the JPY is spread as a quote pair across these three pairs, we need to still think about them in terms of correlation because if JPY is the strong mover in the course of next week, then obviously we'll see um, JPY strongly moving all of these uh, base pairs, these JPY quote pairs. So let's get on to our fourth pair guys, AUD CAD. So on AUD CAD, we'll hop up to the daily, just have a look at some structure quickly. On the daily, what we have kind of pointed out is some extreme lows over there. Obviously the origin point of this buying momentum that came in that was able to violate some previous resistance. So an important support structure. Now we're always paying attention to two pieces of things. First of all, how prices approach our important level of structure. And second of all, what prices do at our level of structure. And those two things give us information as to how we should be reacting to the nature of price at our current area. So a higher time frame, we're at support. We can see some deceleration towards this support. And if we drop down onto our smaller time frames like the H4, what we will see is further deceleration towards the support structure over there. What we've seen before is prices actually, and it's, I guess it's really relevant for, for us to even look back on our previous analysis, is prices decelerating towards the support, accelerating away from the su support. And then we see prices entering another consolidation towards the support structure. So showing us decisive buying and indecisive selling, because we can clearly see that as prices are trending to the downside, this is not such an aggressive trend because the trend line shows us that this is very gentle. Now, looking at the structure that we've isolated on the H4, we do have a beautiful, beautiful three touch structure. Now we have our first touch over there. We have our second touch over here. Prices came in and gave us that third touch, thanks to NFP as well. NFP completed the setup beautifully for us. So we've got that third touch at our important area of support where we are looking to buy. What we also have on our lower time frames, isolating structure further is identification of another descending structure. So we're seeing prices on multiple time frames descending towards our higher time frame support structure. That is the reason why we're aligning ourselves on the bullish side of things on Aussie CAD. Now, if we look at the setup, we've also completed a lovely three touch structure. First touch there, second touch over here, and NFP gave us that beautiful third touch. All we should be looking for at this point in time is for price to give us a change of structure. So if we're looking to trade this off H1 confirmation, then we should be waiting for price to break above structural highs or give us some nice impulsive moves to the upside, followed by a correction for the continuation to the upside. Now, if you're like me and you'll be on those smaller time frames looking to isolate some structure, then what I would be looking for is for prices. They've already shown me this nice impulsive move to the upside. I would be waiting for prices to give me a corrective structure to get in on this trade. If not a corrective structure, for prices to give me a reversal structure, which is still a structure that aligns in the direction that I'm looking to trade. So regardless of what price gives me, I have my directional bias and it's off higher time frame structure. All I need to do is on my lower times, look to isolate some structure that will support the bias that I have based off higher time frame structure. And also that will give me the opportunity to capitalize on that higher time frame structure that I'm looking to trade. So that's what we're looking for on Aussie CAD guys. We're going to be bullish bias, just waiting for Aussie CAD to give us that setup that will allow us to enter in the direction of this higher time frame momentum that we anticipate will come into the market and send prices higher. Now, in terms of targets, we're going to look to target at important key areas. So higher time frame resistance over there, which is obviously some H4 resistance. We also have the beginning of our H1 structure. So the 90% rule of this H1 structure that we have identified and isolated, that's where we'll be looking to partial majorly. The next area of importance where we should be looking to partial out on this trade is our beginning of the H4 descending structure. So that is kind of the area where we're going to look to final um, or to, to exit this position finally. So if we look at things, guys, in terms of the position that we're looking to take, because we're looking to swing this and get some higher time frame um, momentum, what we're looking to do is to target 
these final areas up here. Let's just get this up there. So we're looking to target the 90% rule of this structure, but we're looking to manage our trade and partial out according or as prices get to these key important areas where we might see a reaction from. So that if prices fail to break an important key area, we've partialed out of our position, we've secured more profits at that uh, TP1, and then if prices do decide that they want to continue with this higher time frame bearish structure that we have, then we've already partialed out and made sure that we secured some profits on this trade. So even if we miss this risk entry, guys, there's going to be, as you can see, maybe our potential uh, momentum might give us a nice impulsive break of structure, followed by a beautiful retest for some continuation. So let's exercise patience, but this is a pair that is definitely going to be on the top of my watch list that I'm looking for from Monday for those bullish setups. So this is Aussie CAD, guys. We're looking to buy Aussie CAD. We'll go into um, New Zealand Dollar CAD. So on New Zealand Dollar CAD, we'll go, we'll start off on the daily. And on the daily, what we will see, um, let me just put that off on the daily what we will see guys if we begin to isolate structure so higher time frame structure is very similar to AUD CAD we do have important support structures over here that price is approaching um, so we don't want that in there we just want to focus on the most recent price action so what we see in this most recent price action is price creating some structure for us we have support there we have support there now because we've identified some higher time frame support structure we are isolating this and identifying this structure as prices correcting towards our support because we can see prices slowing down as we are approaching this support structure here on a higher time frame. So we're identifying this as a decelerating corrective structure. So looking for momentum to shift. Now, if we drop down onto our H4, we'll be able to isolate more structure that obviously supports this bias that we have from our higher time frames and just observing higher time frame structure. Now on the H4, what we have is another descending structure. So this is some sort of an expanding descending structure. We do have our first touch. We do have our second touch. So prices could and might be attracted to come and give us this third touch of this descending structure. That is where we will have the appropriate buying probabilities to get in on any upside momentum on this pair. Whether we able, whether we prices give us the opportunity to be able to find a risk entry or maybe a reduced risk entry, nonetheless, guys, we're going to be bullish on this pair. Look for prices to pull a little bit lower just to give us that optimal trading setup. Now, the reason why we grouped AUD CAD and NZD CAD is because we're bullish bias on both of these pairs. AUD CAD is already at our support structure preparing to give us that buy. NZD CAD is still far from our support structure and can still approach our support structure and give us a better buy. So what we're doing is on AUD CAD, guys, we're going to be uh, prioritizing the structure that's developing here and look for our buys. But if these CAD quote pairs decide to drop over the course of next week, we won't take our AUD CAD setup, but what is NZD CAD going to be doing? NZD CAD will be dropping, giving us a better buy. So if next week we do see that bullish momentum coming in with these CAD quote pairs, we're going to be looking at AUD CAD. But if the momentum decides to be bearish and we see them sell, then we start to focus on the development of our New Zealand dollar CAD setup. Now, if we also think about things in terms of correlation, those JPY quote pairs that we were trading, we are looking for some cells on those pairs. Now, one of the pairs that is correlated to AUD CAD is AUD JPY. Now, AUD JPY, we're looking to sell. AUD CAD, we're looking to buy. What does that mean? That means that if AUD is the main driver of strength in the course of next week, and there's AUD strength, we'll get a trading setup to buy into AUD strength on AUD CAD. If there's AUD weakness and we see these AUD base pairs shooting down over the course of next week, then AJ is the pair that we look at because we are sell biased on that pair. The same goes for New Zealand dollar JPY. We're looking to sell New Zealand dollar JPY 
very very harshly and if we see i guess um that 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 sell side momentum coming in and aud jpy i mean nzd jpy beginning to go to the downside what's going to happen to our nzd cat setup our nzd cat setup will obviously or could put pull a little bit lower so we're looking to capitalize on any new zealand dollar um let me just do this my screen was freezing any new zealand dollar weakness guys we're looking to trade that weakness on new zealand dollar jpy any new zealand dollar strength that will send markets to the upside we're looking to trade that strength on new zealand dollar cad so that's how we are thinking about our portfolio in terms of correlation the pairs that we have managing risk across those pairs and obviously searching and literally just cherry picking the best setups with the highest probabilities on each of these pairs based off the individual structure that these pairs are giving us so we're not imposing a bias on any of these pairs we're still identifying important key areas and we're still exercising patience and waiting for setups to develop so we're still trading the structure on all of these pairs but at the same time we're allowing ourselves to trade any strength any weakness and to be able to manage our risk according to the strengths and the weaknesses that we have in our pairs we are even able to hedge our pairs so maybe if we're buying AUD JPY we can still sell um, AUD CAD because they're both I mean sorry we, we're looking to buy AUD CAD and we're looking to sell AUD JPY so we can still do the opposite on both of these pairs and what this will be is this will be hedging our positions so if AUD is the main driver of strength one of these positions will get stopped out at minus one and obviously the other position will run at a minimum risk to reward ratio of one is to three and I will still make plus two percent on this hedge even though I traded opposing um I guess an opposing in opposing directions in one base or rather across one base pair so still guys managing that risk across still doing things still trading the individual structure on our pairs now guys we have actually come to the end of this analysis hopefully you guys have received all the value that was deeply intended for you guys if you have received the value definitely do drop this video a like otherwise if it's your first time subscribe to the channel so you always catch and are up to date when these analyses and forecasts and as well as the concept educational um the educational concepts that we do come out with on the channel you will be notified when all of that do does come out so do definitely subscribe to the channel otherwise this is tremaine your fx chases mentor i will see you guys in the future videos thanks for watching till the end cheers